Hi, Al Lewis here. Today I want to talk about stencil making, one specific technique that I've been using on cabinets that require either a lot of colors or a lot of, of uh, complicated shapes. Uh, a lot of those that I've experienced are the 1950s uh, pinballs. Gottlieb had some pretty complex designs with colors and shapes. This is probably the toughest one that I've done. This is a 1956 uh, Gottlieb rainbow pinball machine. And uh, I call this the jigsaw puzzle stencil method. I started using it when I did a Gottlieb Around the World, a 1959 pinball. Uh, it had some complicated shapes and a lot of colors to it. Uh, not as complex as this. This is the most challenging one that I've done. Uh, this is not necessarily the best way to do it. This is the way that I do it. It works well for me. Uh, it produces excellent results. I do not end up with any uh, mismatch of any of the colors meeting each other. Every shape meets without showing any gap through it into whatever colors underneath. In this case, I have a white primer paint on the cabinet, and then I paint over that. That way all the colors have a consistent white uh, beneath them, and they come out a lot better. But if I had any mismatch of my stencil shapes, I would notice a white line or a white witness line coming through where the colors meet, where the shapes meet. And I don't get any of that with this kind of technique, and that's one reason I like it. It's essentially foolproof. You're going to get perfect joints every time without doing any work whatsoever. You do all your work up front in making the stencil, and then when you get to painting it, it's quite easy to work. The material for the stencils I use is standard stencil oil board, which is easily uh, obtained from an art supply store or any place to sell stencil supplies. It's only like four or five dollars a sheet, about the size of poster board. But uh, I found that poster board uh, distorts too much when you get paint on it. It absorbs the paint and it ends up getting uh, creased and, and wavy and it gets hard to hold down to the cabinet. So I stopped using poster board and I started using oil board. And oil board works a lot better. It stays flatter. And when you paint over it, it doesn't distort the um, paper itself. It just stays perfectly flat. So it's very, very good material for pinball stencils and very economical too. The first thing that you need to do is you need to make a pattern of your pinball cabinets uh, paint job. So you hopefully at least have one side of the cabinet or one face that has enough of the original shapes and colors that you can reproduce. In this case, this side was sanded down already, but the other side was okay. So I made my stencil on the other side. I used tracing paper. I bought a long enough piece of tracing paper that I could just put it across the entire cabinet. And then I merely draw all the border lines of all the shapes. A lot of them are straight lines. You just use a straight edge and, and a pen or a pencil. And for the radiuses, you can use either a compass or uh, I have a series of these being as old as I am. I actually had these when I was doing a lot of drafting and engineering. Uh, these are circle templates. I believe you can still buy them, but they're very useful to have if you're doing pinball cabinet stenciling or any other kind of reproduction work whatsoever. So I have a whole series of these. And these you can just find out which one matches the, the radius of it and just draw it and then you're all done. It's very, very quick. Once you have the pattern traced, then you remove the paper, tracing paper, and you go over to a nice big flat table that'll take that paper or the floor, whatever you have to work on, and you lay this paper onto your oil board. Now you may have to join together a couple pieces of oil board, which uh, I do by, uh, this had another piece joined to it, and I just use masking tape to join the two pieces together to get yourself a longer oil board to reach the, the length of the cabinet. So you put your tracing paper on your oil board, you tape it down so it doesn't move around, and then you just start using a uh, exacto or a razor knife and you start cutting out the shapes. Uh, you can do it freehand, you can do it with, they have some compasses that actually have an exacto blade in them so you can do precision 
uh, arcs, uh, like this arch right here. You can cut those out with a knife blade and a compass. Uh, Exacto, I think, sells that or some other companies sell that. Uh, a lot of it you can do freehand. Uh, it really doesn't matter too much. So once you have all your pieces cut out, you're going to end up with a lot of odd shapes. These would be shapes that would cover that up. This would go here. And these mate together perfectly with no gaps or anything. So you're going to have a, the whole stencil will cover the cabinet. And then for each color, you just remove these pieces that correspond just to that color. So when you're painting the dark blue, you just remove whatever covers the dark blue. That piece, that piece, that piece, all the dark blue pieces. You leave all the other ones attached to the cabinet. And you just paint your blue. Once the blue is dry enough to, uh, to touch without a problem, half a day or a full day uh, will probably be necessary depending upon how heavy of a paint that you put on there. I put on a very, very light paint, so I can get away with sometimes doing a half a day of drying, but I usually try to give it overnight for any color change that I do. So when you're done with one color, you put that piece back into the jigsaw puzzle, and then you say, okay, what's my next color? And if it's this color here, then you remove these pieces that correspond to that color. those down there and then you paint those and you just and then you put these back when it's dry and then you move on to the next color so you just keep walking along your colors and you never have to pay attention to putting things back perfectly they're going to fit perfectly because it's a jigsaw puzzle everything is already there this is going to fit right back to where you pulled it out from now the secret to this working is how to hold these things to your cabinet because you don't want them to be blown off when you spray or maybe you're going to be spraying with a with a cabinet vertical like this. I don't, I spray it with it uh, horizontal, but you can do this uh, with a cabinet vertical because these will actually stay on the cabinet. What I do is I take whatever shape it is and I cut rectangular holes or even punch round holes, it doesn't really matter what shape, in just a few places around it. And then I take blue ma uh, painter's masking tape. I just tear off a piece and I cover the hole. And I cover these individual holes, and that's blue painter's tape showing through the window. You put this on the cabinet, and you push on those windows, and it stays in place. When you're ready to paint the color, they release very easily. Plus, being painter's tape, it won't stick to the painted surface that you just did, as long as it's dry enough. So it makes it so it's easy to use and you, put it, you can put it over a painted surface, a freshly painted surface. So uh, you don't need a whole lot of these. You just need enough to hold this thing in place from blowing off and to keep the oil board in somewhat close contact. I mean, this stuff stays flat. The oil board stays flat. So just a few of these uh, masking tape holes will hold the entire piece flat against there. So that works real well. And when you have smaller and smaller pieces, you, you know, you can still fit at least one window in there with a piece of masking tape to hold it on. So you'll end up with, that's how many I put on uh, that shape there. So you just keep putting these shapes on and off of the cabinet, depending upon what colors that you want. And that way you can paint all of your one color at the same time, just in one pass. You can paint all the yellows, all the greens, all the oranges, all the blues, uh, they all get painted at one time because all just those shapes are exposed. And that is the essence of this technique. And again, it's uh, all the work is in the preparation of the stencil. You're going to spend your time drawing this, the uh, tracing paper shapes and you're going to spend quite a bit of time cutting your stencil. Once it's cut, it's going to go very, very easily. You don't have to really pay much attention to anything, but just get the right color, take the right panels off. And then 
if you were to do both sides of the cabinet, you can use this. You just take the tape off of this side when you're done and you put it on this side and now it becomes the mirror image. And you just put that on the cabinet with a paint side towards the cabinet and you have your mirror image of the pattern and you paint it just like you did this side here. So you only cut the stencil once. You don't have to cut two stencils. 